no longer will he have to cringe when announcing his religion, and that in itself has got to be a good thing. Can I just say something? I was actually just going to bring you in, Ross, as president of the Australian Atheist Association. What do you say to all this? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the whole discussion has so far been a total waste of time. You're all avoiding the central core of the matter. There's no point in discussing the future of religion because, as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't got one. Our society simply doesn't need religion anymore. Let's face it, we are no longer hunters and gatherers or medieval peasants. We are educated, sophisticated human beings who live and work in a technologically advanced society. We no longer need superstitions to get us through the day. So I put it to you, and I put it to everyone here tonight. Isn't it about time we face reality rather than go on creating new deceptions for ourselves? Elaborate with you, Ross. I think I know what you mean, but there may be some in the audience who don't. It is simply this. If there is one thing which is true in this world, it is that no one will ever come to know the truth. And I mean no one. It is simply impossible for it to ever happen. Our brains are just too limited. The universe is just too complex. Surely it is obvious by now especially in this day and age of postmodernism, that knowledge is processual and is shaped by historical circumstances. No one can ever escape their cultural background, so why the need to propagate religious myths at all? Why not simply point out to people the obviousness of reality? Um, that's easy to answer. Uh, some people will find the position that everything is uncertain to be unsatisfactory and will want to seek a better answer. Well, let them. Who cares? Doesn't bother me. They'll just go around in circles. Tell me, Ross, are you absolutely certain that everything is uncertain? No, of course not. Well, then, what if the truth should in fact turn out to be knowable? Shouldn't society take those few extra precautions to dissuade the stubborn few who seek it? Why? What's it to me if they want to seek it? Well, it may encourage others to do the same, and if we do nothing to prevent it, the world could be overrun with sages. I agree. I think it's better to firmly imprint in people's minds the idea that truth, if it's going to be found at all, can only be found in religion. In this way, any individual who does get it into his head to go off and seek the truth will automatically turn to religion and thus have his aspirations wrecked from the start. A most ingenious strategium, isn't it? I never cease to admire it myself. Uh, nothing is ever said outright, you see. No one ever says plainly that religion is concerned about truth, and yet no one ever says that it isn't. Uh, in fact, we barely mention the whole matter at all. Uh, we just perhaps hint at it now and again, or we mix it up with words like God or love or community, without ever spelling out the connections between them. It's sublime, isn't it? Oh, indeed. Uh, in fact, religion is very much like a woman. Uh, this may seem to you a strange thing for me to say, but really uh, it is a most useful way of looking at it. Uh, in both cases, you see, the aim is to seduce. Um, a woman puts on her light summer dress, dabs on some perfume, laughs and acts like a child, and behold, men are spellbound. Uh, the church is no different. Um, it's not afraid to spruce itself up in order to in order to charm the populace. Look at our hymns and prayers, for example. See how uh, cleverly they excite the emotions of yearning and self-pity in the listener. In everything it does, the church seems to hint at some kind of uh, mysterious reality, or point to some kind of profound and glorious truth. Yet the whole thing is a charade. It's an illusion in the same way that the purity and divinity of a pretty girl is an illusion. And just as the man who is lucky enough to be captured by a pretty girl loses his individuality and becomes a husband, so too the man who is caught by the church loses his individuality and becomes a Christian or a Buddhist. It really is sublime, as you say. Uh, what better way to attract all those stupid fools who insist on searching for the truth and um, living honestly? How I laugh when they come over to me with their eager expressions and their trusting eyes. And how I bend over in stitches when I see them falling down in submission in front of the statues of Mary and Jesus and praying for their forgiveness. No, no, no. This is entirely the wrong approach. Why use the concept of truth at all? Why? All you do is give people ideas. 
Why not simply teach people about the concept of usefulness and let the whole notion of truth fade away like a snowflake evaporating under the morning sun? Why encourage people to waste their energies on worthless abstractions? We have far more important work to do. It is precisely why I set up AAA in the first place. We have to press home to people that their first priority in life is to create a prosperous society in which all of humanity can live a rich and dignified existence. AAA preaches a biologically centered, humanistic philosophy based on science and technology. We can't afford to waste time battling the concept of truth. We had diseases to cure, people to feed, wars to end, criminals to punish, drugs to eliminate, environments to protect, species to save. There's so much to do. Isn't it better to teach our kids how to deal with these problems? Let's forget all about the truth. Who needs it? To me, the perfect world would be one in which nobody, and I mean nobody, ever spoke or thought of truth in the slightest degree. Do you really think it's possible? Sure, why not? But the first thing we have to do is rid the world of religion. Um, aren't you forgetting something, Ross? Uh, aren't you forgetting that we are emotional beings? Most people simply won't find fulfillment in your so-called humanistic philosophy. People need hope and reason to live. They need to feel that there's something more to life than just work and society. Religion provides them with that. Okay, but why bring truth into it? Why not simply worship your God without mentioning the concept at all? Well, people do need to believe that the God they're worshipping is in fact real. Look, people need distractions. They don't need anything else. They just need to immerse themselves in the many things which go on around them each day. In fact, I sincerely believe that it's possible for us to go through a whole lifetime just pursuing distractions, nothing else, without ever experiencing the need to examine the question of one's existence or other such absurdities. Let's get people involved in sex and saving the environment and running a successful business and so on. Why complicate matters? Oh well, religion is an excellent distraction. I'm afraid we're fast running out of time and we'll have to wrap up what has been a fascinating discussion. But before we do, let me give you my view of the matter. I'm of the opinion that the truth is knowable. In other words, I believe that people can fully understand the ultimate reality. And how do I know this? Because I know the truth. I know it and I can vouch from personal experience that it is the most evil thing in the world and as such must be thoroughly eliminated from the face of the earth. As you can see, I am strongly anti-truth. I believe that anyone who decides to have a relationship with the truth immediately destroys everything of human value. Family, love, friendship, pleasure, marriage, hobbies, contentment, satisfaction and all the other things that are essential to a rich and fulfilling life. It is far more destructive, I tell you, than drug addiction. This is why I personally have dedicated my life to the complete destruction of it, and why I have set up an organization like the Society for the Elimination of All Truth. It's my belief that we as a species can no longer afford to simply rely on myth and superstition to see us through. We cannot afford to rely on the unconscious element of chance. It is time for us to develop consciously the tools to destroy the philosophic life once and for all. Consciously develop the tools to destroy the philosophic life? Heaven forbid. What is this? This is precisely why we don't want the truth. We don't want to live consciously. Yes, I agree. Speaking purely as a Buddhist here, I think it's safe to say that we don't want to have any responsibilities. We don't want to have to work things out for ourselves. We just want to meditate. And we just want to submit to God, who lives forever and ever. Amen. I hate to say it, but I concur with these two. What's the point of being ignorant if one has to be all conscious about it? Well, the problem is that if we don't want to consciously weed out the truth, if we are just going to rely on the traditional means of religion and academic philosophy and science to maintain our ignorance, then we run the very real risk of truth exploding all around us. Oh, come on. Surely you don't believe that. The risk is small, I grant you, but still it's there. The thing, you see, is that the traditional methods of ridding thought are unconscious methods, and so, in effect, we are relying on chance to protect us. But that's precisely the point. Yes, well, I don't feel safe relying on chance. I'd rather take matters into my own hands and be sure of destroying truth completely. 
although this may impinge on my happiness somewhat in the sense that I have to do some thinking, I nevertheless feel more secure than if I didn't do it. After all, I have my children to consider. Hmm. Yes, I see your point. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I do see it. My concern is, though, that by consciously trying to eliminate the truth, you're in grave danger of becoming just like them, you know, like a sage. I just hope you're extremely careful. Relax, I do not advocate full consciousness. Only enough to see off the truth, that's all. And I'm afraid we'll have to finish up there. Thanks to all our guests and thanks to all of you for showing up. I hope each of you gained some benefit from the discussion and hopefully we'll be back here with another one in a couple of months' time.